Medusa is an instantly recognizable name in ancient Greek history. Her face, either fierce and grotesque or calm and composed, appears in multiple media outlets in varying contexts. Medusa was a figure in ancient Greek mythology. She was a beautiful maiden and guard for Athena. In fact, her name comes from the ancient Greek term to guard or to protect. One day, while she was in the shrine of Athena, she was raped and impregnated by the god Poseidon. Athena found out about this and decided to curse Medusa in order to protect her, but many believe it was out of jealousy. The story of Medusa can be seen as a horrendous act that shows the true colors of the Greek gods. She was punished for something she could not control, as she didn't decide to get raped. Over the many decades, the story of Medusa has been commonly misunderstood and altered, and we ask the question, why? Why has the story of Medusa been commonly misunderstood and altered? Well, it's because of the way she looks. Snakes flowing out of her hair, the power to turn men into stone. She's threatening. But should we as a society judge someone based on their outside appearance or what's in their heart? Researching and understanding the story of Medusa has led me to realize how stereotyping can even affect me as an African-American male in today's society. Medusa is a prime example of how stereotyping can happen and affect someone negatively, as her story was just thrown around negatively, and that's all we know about her. But we don't know her true story. But before I get into modern experiences with stereotyping that dominate the African-American community, I'd like to talk about the history of African-American stereotyping in our country. By 1830, minstrel shows were performed in New York by white characters who mocked and imitated black, black people on Southern plantations. They characterize these people as ignorant, lazy, superstitious, hypersexual, and prone to thievery, thievery and cowardice. But this is not the first time we've seen this, as over the many years, minstrel has become its own sub-entertainment industry, manufacturing songs, sheet music, costumes, role-playing, as long as a ready, as ready set go of stereotypes to use to build upon new performances. Thomas Dermot Rice created a very complex blackface character by the name of Jim Crow by 1830, and by 1845, the minstrel sparked into its own sub-entertainment industry. This was the birth of African-American stereotyping in our country. And while we did become more accepting as a culture and became more diverse as a society, we still see things happen to this day. And while it is important to understand the continuity and change that has happened in our country, we need to make sure that we know that this is still happening. Racial stereotyping and racial discrimination is happening to this day, causing for things as horrible as police brutality and a loss of life. But does it really have to be this way in today's society? Before we go on to how we can fix the problem, which is stereotyping in our country, we must understand two different types of stereotype that we often overlook, passive and active stereotyping. Active stereotyping is the intentional categorization of people based on their race, ethnicity, or other defining characteristics. Many people have experienced this, so I made it my goal to reach out to African Americans in AXA and see how active stereotyping affected them. I received several testimonies on this and I wanted to share one with you guys. One was by a 12th grader here at Oslo County School of the Arts and she said, I, a black woman, was walking through the grocery store when a white woman came up to me and said, you're pretty for a black girl. At first, I took this as a compliment, but soon realized how naive I actually was and how blatantly racist this was, as she indirectly implied that everything would be better if I wasn't black, and as she basically stated that I fit the black girl beauty standard, but not the normal beauty standard. Stereotypes significantly hinder academic performance for, from people from largely stigmatized groups. The, the standard experimental paradigm of stereotypes prove two conditions, threat and no threat. Stereotype threats cause for severe disengagement for African-American students. And it, and it is also proven to um, assist with low test scores. Passive stereotyping is stereotyping without truly knowing you're doing it. It could be as simple as grabbing your bag while you're walking past an African-American that looks suspicious. I also reached out for a testimony on passive stereotyping and found one that shows the true experience of stereotyping against a largely stigmatized African-American group. Now, this wasn't to shame the person, but to show how simple things can affect someone. 
Now, this person, an 11th grader here at OXA, stated that I, a white woman, was walking down the stairs on the Upper West Side to the subway when I realized there was an African American walking behind me. I was alone, so I decided to walk faster and feared that I'd get attacked. He soon found out that I was doing this and asked, are you walking up because I'm black? Trust me, I won't hurt you. We do this all the time without truly knowing we're being prejudiced. This mindset will not lead to change. Medusa's story is a clear example of how stereotyping can affect someone. We are not blind, and we know that stereotyping affects every race and ethnicity. But it's important to understand that when we come together, we can build a more unified front. With the more unified country, we can work for better ideals and not be stuck on mindsets and ideals of the past. When we step into a better tomorrow, we step into a tomorrow where the common topics around the dinner table is how we will succeed and live the American dream, not how many obstacles stand in our way. Thank you. Thank you.